Yeah, so I just wanted to do a quick presentation about what's coming up in version five of Archimy. And if you're interested, we have a tracking issue 2161 that you can look at. It has all of the things that is being added and kind of all of the PRs around it. We're planning to merge kind of the 5.0 branch onto the main line later this week, hopefully tomorrow. And then we're targeting release the week of the 13th of November. Uh, we'll see how that goes. And so if you go look at the GitHub issue, you'll see all of these different tasks and things we've done. And in 5.0, we've tried to do a lot better job of tracking the tasks and actually the PR that was used to add it. And this is all that would fit on the screen, but there's a bunch more things that we're adding. So I'm really happy with where 5.0 is and how it's turning out. And kind of the main themes of the 5.0 release is really just improving the code base, making it easier to do things, sharing code between all of our different tools. We have a lot of tools. I don't know if folks are aware of it, but there's around eight different tools that used to not do the best job sharing code. And now with 5.0, we've really made everything uh, kind of just one, one way to do things across all of our tools. And so just going to go through these really quickly. Because it's the back end stuff, there's not a lot of UI to show. So it's mostly text here. So it's not as exciting as Elisa's presentations when she gets to show off the UI. But I, I've been pretty happy with what I've gotten done. And one of the biggest things is just the configuration. At Archimede, back uh, earlier this year, we talked about the configuration and how it's kind of confusing. And then the code has been a, kind of a jumbled mess. And so we've spent a lot of time making it just one way to configure all the tools, like, and improving what that one way is, including you can now have configuration in YAML and JSON. So besides just the INI files, we're also supporting YAML and JSON. And those config files could be more than just local. Like right now, they always had to be local on disk. You can also store them in Redis, Elasticsearch, or just a URL. So on startup, all of our tools now have the ability to go off and get the configuration files remotely and then use them. So they don't have to be locally on the disk, although they, they can be. You can do it however you used to do it before. Uh, this brings up the question is, will we drop INI support in the future just because you know, YAML and JSON is just so much more expressive and easier to use? Uh, not for 5.0, but maybe for 6.0, we might uh, drop the INI support. So we're still talking about what we're going to do. And so just to show off what this means is like, and pre 5.0, this is everybody had a config.ini file, and you'd have these sections, and you'd use uh, the standard INI format for describing your configuration. And here we have a default section and a node section. Well, now you can do YAML and JSON. So here's the sample in YAML. We're just using normal YAML format, which is just using spaces and colons, and it's, it's just much easier to read, I find. But wait, there's more. Things that are arrays, you can now actually specify as arrays. Like previously, you would have one line and there'd be either comma separated or semicolon separated. And now they can, in both YAML and JSON, you can do arrays of those variables that contain multiple values. So you can do it in either way. You can do it in the old way where everything is just on one line and you're still using commas and semicolons, or you can now do them as arrays. So I think this is making it a lot easier to specify your configuration and easy, easier to read the configuration. So really excited about this. And the, the best part is that all of the tools from Parliament to Capture to Viewer all support the same file format. And they're all using the same code to read it in. So that's really cool. And so like I mentioned before, you can also do remote configuration. So here's some examples of Capture. Using, you know, starting up with you know, either an Elasticsearch configuration or a, a YAML configuration that lives off in a different host, it can now start up and download that configuration file and use it. And so it doesn't have to be local. You can also do Redis. Currently, Capture doesn't support the Redis uh, distribution method, but all the other tools do. Uh, it's unclear if we'll be able to get that done in time for 5.0 for Redis and Capture, but the rest of the tools will support Redis for your configuration. And so this makes it, if you want to have a centralized config for your tools, as opposed to having to 
use something like Ansible or an orchestration system to push out the configuration, you can. Some other components that we've updated to share is debugging. So now all of the all of the uh, different pieces of software share how they do debugging. Same with logging configuration. It used to be that viewer had the powerful way to, to update your logging. Now all the tools have the ability to update the logging. You can change where the logs go to. You can change off which APIs to log. And everything is now the same across the tools. Same goes with listening. It used to be like each tool had a slightly different way that they were listening to ports and getting information. And now that's all shared. And most excitingly is that the dropping of privileges, that's the whole drop user and drop group part, is now done after the listen. Previously, it was very hard to listen on port 443 on your tools. We used to have the problem where if you wanted to listen on ports below 1024, you either had to do uh, some port redirection or you had to remove the uh, privilege dropping. Now we've moved the privilege dropping to after the listen, so you can listen on any port with no problem. Also, something I didn't mention on here is this certificate reloading and uh, monitoring is all the same across all of our tools now. So really, we've, we've just done a lot of work to, behind the scenes to make it so all the tools work the same. We've also improved authentication. We've decided to stop having anonymous as the default authenticator, and now digest is the default. This means that when you install Archimy, it's going to start up in digest mode right from the beginning before. Some tools would start up in digest, some tools would start up anonymously. We would get dinged in security reviews because of this, and now we won't have that anymore. We also added three new types of authentication. We have basic. So if you want to use basic auth instead of digest, you can. It's not recommended. We also support form authentication, and I have a screenshot in just a second. The main reason we added form authentication is because people constantly ask for a logout button. But it's not possible to have a logout button when you do either digest or basic authentication. With form, it is. And then we're trying to add SAML. Our SAML support is in there, but we're having problems testing it because we don't use SAML very often. So if uh, if any of you use SAML and be willing to work with us for testing or implementation, that would really be a useful uh, endeavor. So please contact us. And related to that, all of the sessions that now use cookies have those cookies stored in Elasticsearch or OpenSearch so that you can have multiple instances of viewer running and all of them share the session cookie. That means you won't have to re-log in every time you end up on a different viewer system. They can all share it. And so this is what our new form authentication form looks like. So basically, if, if you hit a page and you need to log in, you get a, a login screen. And instead of using like the browser-based login thing that, that Digest and uh, Basic would use, you would get a web page login. So again, the main purpose of form is to allow you to have a logout button. We're also changing our defaults. So we talked about this at the last Archimy, where people want Archimy to have the best defaults when it's installed and you're not having to go through the config file. And so some of the things that we're changing are we're, we're making Z standard the default compression. We're going to turn on compression by default of your PCAP files, and we're going to use Z standard. And Z standard is twice as fast, at least, as the gzip library. So it's very, very fast compared to gzip. And it actually has a slightly better compression ratio in the default settings. We're also going to increase the default compression block size so that you get even better compression. This will usually increase your compression by 1% to 2% uh, with no CPU cost. Like I mentioned before, we're going to have digest as a default authentication. Uh, if you use S3 for your storage, we're changing a bunch of different things, including making it so that we compress the packet index like we do for on disk storage. So if, currently, if you store your PCAP on disk, we do index compression. But if you store it in S3, we don't. We're going to change that so they're both the same. And we're going to enable the, our packet deduplication by default. Currently, it is off, and you have to enable it. Uh, we found that packet de duplication can save at least 5% to 10% of your PCAP storage, depending on your network.
kind of our code health and tech debt removal. We've been working on removing Moloch everywhere. We're going to be, you know, trying to fully embrace Archimy in the code. So captures already done. Uh, viewer, we're going to be doing soon. Basically, we're just make everything say Archimy. And related to that is removing all the old APIs. Uh, we still were supporting APIs from the version one of Moloch. And you know those APIs aren't being used anywhere anymore, so we're just going to remove them. We're updating all of our license headers, so it's we're using the new standard that makes it machine readable about what license each file is. And like I mentioned before, we've improved our debugging. And Parliament has been mostly rewritten to be kind of a new style. It's been kind of dormant for a while where we weren't updating it, and it was kind of lagging. And so now it's been almost totally rewritten to deal with all of these new shared components and just uh, be more robust. We've done a lot of work on context. Elise, uh, two weeks ago, gave a UI demo of all of the changes from the UI standpoint. But from the back end, we're adding a bunch of new things, including a whole bunch of new generic integrations. So currently, most of the integrations in context are based on services, where you go in and you, know, you say, I'm using this service, and here's my key and we do everything for you. With these generic integrations, you can actually build up uh, the integration about where you're storing, storing your data, including in files, Elasticsearch, and Redis. And you can basically, kind of like WISE, add generic integrations and just configure how you want to get the data no matter what, including Archimy itself, where you can configure, here are my Archimy clusters. Inside of context, query my Archimy clusters, and then allow me to click a link to get into Archimy. So you can search for an IP address, for example. It will search Archimy for that in context, show it in the context UI, and allow you to pivot. We also have new bulk APIs. That's what the new UI that Elise showed you uses. And we can now made it so that all integrations can have a role behind them so you can disable them for users you don't want to be able to use them. So let's say you have to pay for a particular integration, and you only want some special set of users to be able to use it, you can now set it up so that in the config file, only users with the role X can use it. For building our community, the biggest thing is uh, we're moving to Node.js v18. Previously, we're on v16. Uh, v16 has been discontinued, and so v18 is where we need to be. Unfortunately, there's no official builds for CentOS 7 and Ubuntu 18 for 18. So we are using what are termed the unofficial builds. The unofficial builds are still built by the Node.js folks. They're just not supported. We think this is OK, because we're going to stop supporting CentOS 7 and Ubuntu 18 in Q1 anyway. Both of those distributions are not being updated very well. Uh, and if you're on either of those, you should be upgrading as soon as possible. We've also added Alpine and Amazon Linux 2023 support. We're hopefully going to have our official Docker image coming soon uh, based on Alpine. So we're making progress with that. We've now made it so the back end of Viewer supports multi-ES for almost all of our tabs. The only tabs left that don't support multi-ES are periodic query and hunts. So that means in your viewer application, you can now choose for almost every tab which clusters to run whatever you're trying to do against. So for example, if you're looking at the history, you can now say, oh, I want to look at the history for these two tabs. I'm sorry, for these two clusters or this cluster. You get to select it. So multi-viewer will be much, uh, much easier to use and allow you to narrow down exactly what you're trying to do. And we no longer turn off stats tabs stats subtabs on multi-viewer like we used to. So when you're looking at any of the stats tabs, now you can select which clusters you want to run against. And that's really all I got. That was just a quick overview of what's coming in 5.0 from the back end point of view.